Welcome into the Boys Collective episode number 36 right here on 105 Through the Fan on YouTube. My name is Kevin Gray alongside Super Bowl winning scout and one-fourth of the G-Bag Nation, Brian Broaddus, on this uh, disappointing uh, Cowboys Monday here after the Cowboys fall 11, or excuse me, 25 to 22 to fall to 11 and 5 on the season. But good afternoon, Brian. How are you? Well, Kevin, thank you. Uh, yeah, it, it not a little disappointing. I would say a lot disappointing with so much really on the line uh, for this football team, you know, with uh, a home game, health, all these things kind of pointing in the right direction for the Cowboys to go out there and lose a game like that. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a shock to your system because, you know, there, there was a team, there was a Again, so much to play for. Arizona had a lot to play for, and they clearly were the better team, even though being shorthanded, you know, they did a great job of of handling the game, handling the situations, of uh, converting third downs. A lot of really, you know, if you look at the way, you know, it's so much a different type of a game that they've played, say, the last couple of weeks. So, you know, congratulations to them. And, you know, the Cowboys, you're, you're kind of left, uh, you know, trying to pick up the pieces after this one. A lot to get into here on this episode of the Boys Collective. Make sure you can find us on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. You can find Brian on Twitter at Brian Broaddus. You can also subscribe to 105 Through the Fan here on YouTube and also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 105 Through the Fan. And of course, all of our content at 105 Through the Fan.com. So let's jump into it. The Dallas Cowboys fall 25 to 22 at home to an Arizona Cardinal football team that was missing three starters on offense. Three starters on defense. I don't include DeAndre Hopkins in that missing starter group because he's been out for quite a while. But nonetheless, a shorthanded football team. Meanwhile, the Dallas Cowboys come in the healthiest that they've been all season long. Had Tyron Smith back, had the five starting offensive linemen that they were looking to have at the beginning of the season for the first time uh, all season long. Yet this offense reverted back to its anemic self that we had seen in a lot of ways, except for the Atlanta and for the Washington football team game. And a lot of criticism coming after this game with respect to not just the play calling, but the way that the Cowboys had a lack of execution once again against a good football team and a game that they needed to have. Let's start offensively, Brian. You know, a team in Dak Prescott that did not feel like it was in the kind of offensive rhythm that we obviously saw against Washington. What was the biggest issue that you saw offensively that the Cowboys failed to execute on or game plan wise did not come out with the kind of execution based on what Arizona was giving them? They confused your quarterback is what they did. They found a way to show him various looks and to get him to adjust along the way. And as he's adjusting, then they drop into something, a different look. When you study the game from the morning, like I have, you know, you get what's basically a blitz look. And we all kind of talk about when you blitz Dak Prescott, that good things tend to happen for Dak Prescott. They give him a blitz look. He checks the protection. He keeps it a, a max protection. And then all of a sudden, they drop out. They go back into the cover two look. Say they give you the single high look, then they rotate it back to a cover two look. When I say that, it's the two safeties on the hash. The single high look is the guy in the middle of the safety in the middle of the field. But then all of a sudden, they're acting like they're going to bring pressure. They don't bring pressure. The quarterback then checks the protection to account for potential blitzers, which then keeps backs and tight ends and people into the into the into the scheme. And then all of a sudden they drop and then, you know, now he's left for trying to figure out, okay, wait a minute, they showed me this and now they're giving me this. And I think they, they created a lot of, a lot of doubt. I think they created hesitation. Uh, I think that they created, uh, you know, they did a great job of playing what we call with robbers. Uh, you know, the Cowboys like to run crossers. They like to have guys uh, run through the middle of the field. Uh, you know, it's a big play for CD lamb to have to make. A robber's a guy that plays between the safeties. You play with a little bit of depth, and you don't let them have those crossers. So I think the Arizona Cardinals, Vance Joseph, they did a hell of a job of making Dak Prescott have to, to play in this game and, and make it to the point where giving him one look and then completely showing him another. And I think that really bogged down this offense. and It bogged down his ability, I think, 
uh, to make those plays because you didn't see when they play fast and when they play that, you know, with that open type of offense, we always say with Dak Prescott, it just boom, 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 it goes down the field. But when they make him slow down and have to read everything, then it becomes a little bit of a problem. And I'm not here to say that Dak Prescott's a dumb guy. I think that Dak Prescott at times gets paralyzed by his ability to try and get into the perfect play. I really do. I, I mean, there's going to be a time where all of a sudden he is he is doing so much reading and so much changing that it paralyzes the way that they play. And you can see that. You can see, you know, you can see it with when he drops back and he thinks he's seeing something and it's something completely different. And I think that's, you know, that's part of really what's going on with the Cowboys. You could talk about, well, how do you adjust to that? How well, you know, first off though, is you you trust the call, you trust the you trust the play going in. And you know, you don't go for the perfect play, you don't go for the perfect read. And I think what's happening too is that with Dak Prescott, his his inability to try and throw people open, I think is a problem here. I think that when Dak Prescott sees open, he throws it. When Dak Prescott's not sure he sees open, he tends to hold it and then you have problems or he'll throw it late. So yeah, I mean, give Arizona a lot of credit. They, they showed him a lot of different looks and he didn't handle the offense, didn't handle uh, all the different looks that they got. Which is interesting, Brian, because that's something we've talked about on this podcast, Prescott's ability to throw guys open, to throw with anticipation, to mm-hmm. try and improve on those things when guys aren't necessarily quote unquote wide open. Right. Yesterday was a perfect example of that. And you talked about the disguising that the Arizona Cardinals were able to do, looking like they were bringing pressure, dropping guys into coverage and making things a lot more confusing for him. How does Kellen Moore in that situation, though, as he's recognizing this, help his quarterback by either changing tempo, changing rhythm, or trying to do something to get Arizona out of those kinds of looks to where it can open up things and make these a little bit easier for some quick reads to be able to make some things happen that way? And don't run the ball, KG. Mm-hmm. That your five offensive line, I mean, the one thing that you can do to help Dak Prescott is honestly run the football. And, and if you had some success doing that now – a couple of runs they had that they were called back because of holding penalties. But let's be honest here. You know, I was really looking forward to seeing these five guys play up front together. And as a whole, I don't think that you could say that this group did a very good job at all of blocking up front when it came to running the football. I just don't. And, you know, I was talking with some people at the Cowboys this morning and we're taping this as you and I Monday at lunch and, uh, you know, they were they were they were even having the questions about the stuff that we you know, with the with gap scheme and, and pin and pull and things like that. We just don't see that from this football team anymore. But then again, you you want to believe that with Lyle Collins, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith and also Biotish and Williams, that you weren't going to average like two yards a carry with your backs. You know, that that is a problem. And so. Teams can play coverage against you. Teams can give you various looks because they they have no – there's no fear of you running the football on them. And that's just, just as much as the offensive line as it is Kellen Moore as it is Dak Prescott. You know, they the teams have said, if you know, if they can choke your run, which they have, make Dak Prescott have to play uh, in the game, a cerebral game. And, again, not saying that Dak Prescott is a dumb guy. I'm saying Dak Prescott is a perfectionist. And Dak Prescott is trying to get you in the absolute best play. And maybe there's some situations now where it's, no, you know what? We don't need to check some of these plays. You know, let's try and run the offense. Let's see if we can kind of get some things going. But a lot for this football team starts up front. And up front wasn't very good yesterday. Up front wasn't very good. It felt like a lot of the offensive rhythm was disrupted by a lot of batted down passes. I think there was a total of four batted down passes at one point. Buda Baker jumped a route that he looked like he knew better than the Cowboys had on the CD Lamb uh, play. Because I think Connor McGovern actually had lined up Conor, on the outside. Connor McGovern was out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On a, it looked like yeah. it was going to be a screen play. And Buda Baker jumped. I was like, oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? that's, that's, being, that's being prepped on what is, what you're, what's going on with the scheme. That's, that's being prepped of knowing the game plan. And, it, you know, you're going to give me this look. I anticipate you doing that. And, you know, people will say, well, where's the creativity? Where's the motions? Where's the thing, you know, but then 
he throws a ball to Wilson who throws the ball. If Wilson throws the ball earlier, it's a touchdown. You know, I mean, he, he, he kind of set up and from my seat in the press box, I'm like, throw it, you know, because he had, if he leads uh, Pollard, that, that thing is a touchdown, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's your creativity and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I think that these, I think these defenses are paralyzing Dak Prescott with the looks that they're giving him. And again, you know, you say, well, how do you do it? Well, you know, you have to have the ability to run the ball. You have to have the ability to show a little bit of balance. You have to make some plays in the passing game and you have to not get penalized as you're making plays as, uh, as you're running these plays. So uh, a lot going on uh, for this football team. Uh, you know, the, Arizona did a great job. They really, they got good defensive personnel. They're big in the middle. They've got good linebackers. They, they can cover on the back end well enough. They've got safeties that are super active in the way they play. They tackle well enough, you know, and they got a, 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 a defensive coordinator that kind of had an idea of what you were going to try and do and, and really uh, out coached you in a way of, out, well, out schemed you uh, into getting the stops that he got. Yeah, Buda Baker was fantastic for the Cardinals yesterday. Was all over the field making plays for his football team. Ironically, the Cowboys offensively had 17 carries for 45 yards, 2.6 yards per carry. They went three of 11 on third down, but they went three of three on fourth down yesterday, did the Cowboys. I thought that was a bizarre statistic when you started going through some of the numbers and figure out how things went wrong for the Cowboys. They only had a total of 19 first downs. We'll get to the referees here in a, in a little bit, but sure. let's go to the defensive side of things. Okay. I want to ask you this because the way that I, I, cause I've watched the game back now and the way that I felt that this Cowboys defense approached Kyler Murray, you thought going into this game, use your speed, go attack him, try to I force him so. yeah. to make mistakes. I it didn't so feel too. like they were bringing the kind of pressure that you would want them to have going up against this quarterback. Why is that? I don't understand. I, I, I didn't understand that at all I, yesterday. I really, I really believe KG when we were doing our shows last week that that Dan Quinn would take an aggressive approach with this. And you know, when you when I know watching the game live, being there, it appeared that Kyler Murray was backing up, throwing the ball, what they wanted to do, but he was making some throws, backing up. They were terrified of him playing in space. That that honestly was. You could tell by the way that the defense played yesterday that they were terrified of him potentially getting the ball on the edge and running. And, you know, and you know, that that to me is I'm like, you know what? I, I'm I'm if I'm gonna die, make it make it quick. Don't don't I don't want it to be a <laughs> slow death. And you know, when you watch Kyler Murray play, it it almost was slow death football. I mean, they didn't get any pass rush, they didn't tackle particularly well in space. Leighton Vander Esch was the only one really made the, the, the play that Wilson missed. And, you know, Wilson made a play, missed a play. The third and nine play that he missed was a backbreaker. You know, I mean, they could have got off the field. Because Chase they, Edmonds shook him in the next week. <laughs> shook, him, shook him. They get a first down. They get points out of that. You know, the drop interception in the end zone. I mean, there, there were things that happened that were very uncharacteristic of what we've seen from the Cowboy defense, that they just didn't do a very good job. And, and to me, it's team meet again. I, I'm not interested in sitting back and just kind of seeing what happens. You know, you better go, you better go after this guy, you know, because you let him sit there and make throws. I mean, he's going to hit the 42 yard over. He's going to hit the 43 yarder down the field, you know, and cause you're just, you're allowing him to do it. And I, I, it was surprising to me how soft that they played in that game yesterday defensively. I, two things, because I was surprised and we'll get to the undisciplined nature of which both sides offensively and defensively play with, but there was a couple of back-breaking plays on that 15-play, 91-yard drive that took up nine minutes and 33 seconds. They had a third and eight deep inside of Arizona mm -hmm. territory. And Demarcus Lawrence, now this kind of gets to where, you know, some of the referee kind of, you know, had some impact mm -hmm. on the game. 
I'm not going to lie. I thought he got held on the play, on the third yeah. and eight play. That winds up being a completion to Edmonds. That extends the drive. And then, of course, that leads to the fourth down play where they get the, the fake punt that goes for 23 yards. You had the, the penalty, but they declined it because Ward made, you know, a hell of a catch, you know, on down the field. But I thought those two plays really were backbreakers on that particular drive because yeah. you had a chance to get them off the field and yeah. maybe get things going again for your offense. But that was, it just felt like it was that kind of day with certain plays going the other way. Even the Malik Hooker play on the fourth and goal play where, you know. Had a chance to knock it down, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. And he tipped the yeah. ball, and it still winds yeah. up getting into Wesley's hands. It just felt like it was that kind of day. A lot like how it felt like with the Bron- or the yeah the Broncos game. It just felt yeah. like things were just going the wrong yeah. way for the Cowboys when it came to that. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, to me, and you know, the special teams was a was a factor, it was a negative factor yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, except for you, Brian Anger. I thought Brian Anger was great. You look at the fake punt, you look mm-hmm. at the you know, you look at the missed field goal. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, there's I mean, to me, those are the kinds of things that you can't you can't have happen. I mean, you can't you can't have happen. It's fourth and one in those situations, and you allow them to, to fake a punt. I mean, you got to be ready for that stuff. And to me, I think I think it was just a you know overall though that I mean one team looked like it was ready to play, prepped and ready to go. The other team looked like that they were thinking that they were going to roll their hats out there and everything was going to score thirty eight points and away we go on defense and we were going to get pressure. You know that 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 was that was just not the case yesterday. The Dallas Cowboys, who came into the game number one in the NFL and third down conversion allowed against, allowed the Cardinals to go seven of 16 on third down, nearly 44% after the Cowboys going into that game were holding teams, you know, under 32%. So that was a big factor in that game. Also, yeah. at one point, the Cardinals had five straight third down conversions that were really backbreakers for the Cowboys as they were trying to take care of business on the defensive side. That gets us to another big factor in this game that had Twitter and social media ablaze yesterday, which was the officiating. Uh, Scott Novak's crew, who is notorious for throwing the laundry, a crew that throws the fourth most penalties in the league this year. We already knew coming into this game that the Cowboys were the most penalized team in all the National Football League. Brian and I could go right now to a website and figure out, hey, what crew is calling the game? how big they or how many penalties they call. Like, we could go find that that information. I'm surprised yet again that we're having this conversation knowing, because we think about the Raider game. We know that that crew, notorious for throwing flags, Cowboys did not adjust. The best offense that the Raiders had that day was just getting pass interference calls. In this game, it felt like the Cowboys were having an undisciplined nature, whether it be holding penalties, offside penalties, it felt like a team that just was not prepared to handle what they thought could be coming in terms of a crew that's notorious for throwing the laundry on Sunday afternoons. Yeah. They like to tell us that they study this stuff. You know, they like to tell us that they have an idea that there it's a crew that's going to throw penalties. Jerry Jones in the post game yesterday even said before he got to the game, he was reading about Scott Novak's crew and what, you know, I mean, you know, this this is, you said it, KG, this is one of the most penalized teams, the Cowboys, in the NFL. And they keep telling us they prep it, they prep it, they prep it, but they continue to get penalties. And so what what do I need to believe here? Do I believe the fact that you keep telling us, hey, we talk about it, we talk about it, but you're that undisciplined that you're not doing anything about it? You know, that's... There's a lot of things, KG. There's a lot of things about this whole this 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 whole uh, this whole team that's it's it's troubling. the The thing that's troubling is the penalties are troubling, and the fact that they continue to cover for the kicker. You know, they continue mm-hmm. to cover. You know, they they say, well, you know, I think yesterday was the first time, and I'm sorry, I know you're asking about penalties, but this is the first time I kind of felt like that Mike McCarthy in the post game said, he says, hey. We know we have to make those kicks. We know that. These are playoff atmosphere games. We have to make these kicks. And I think that's the first time that I've seen Mike McCarthy all year actually feel like that maybe maybe there was going to be a discussion today about the kicking situation. Now, the penalties, you can't keep telling me 
that you work on this stuff, that you talk about it and you know these crews and you still have the same penalties, that's on you because the message is not getting through to your players. Mm -hmm. You're one of the most penalized teams in the National Football League and you tell the players every week, these are the penalties you have to watch and they still get those penalties. That's on you as the head coach. That's your responsibility. You have to get that message to your players, and they, they haven't. And that's, that's why the fans can bitch and moan about the officials, but that's you're the team committing penalties. I mean, you, I saw face masking. I saw holding. You know, I saw pass interference. I saw it in my own eyes. Not every single penalty was a missed call. You still get penalties for being sloppy the way you play. So don't blame the officials when they make calls and you're jumping into the neutral zone or you're, you're, you're not looking for the football or you're grabbing a guy downfield. Don't, don't look to the officials as, oh, you're screwing us today because there's <laughs> stuff that gets called in the games that you go, that's a penalty. I mean, Arizona had a pass interference call that didn't look like a pass interference call to me. Mm -hmm. They got called, you know, so – you know, take care of that. Don't qu quit telling us you talk about it and you still are the most penalized team in the league. Don't do that anymore. You know, that's on the head coach. The Cowboys had seven of those 10 penalties on third and fourth down that were just absolute backbreakers. There were a couple where they were able to get a couple of first downs. Dak Prescott had one in particular that he ran for himself, holding penalty, got called back. It just there was just a lot of things that snowball. And what, it had a long run that got called back on the whole. That's right. Mm -hmm. Had one called back as well. And I think one thing that troubled me coming out of the game also, and you were talking about the responsibility of head coach Mike McCarthy. Yeah. Between Leighton Van Der Esch, CeeDee Lamb, Demarcus Lawrence, multiple players came out of that locker room. And one was asked, I think it was Leighton Van Der Esch who was asked the question, what was oh, the yeah. message by McCarthy yeah. to you guys in the locker room? He said, look. You know, you guys keep battling, keep fighting. You know, we had to, you know, we got to sometimes fight against, you know, a couple of teams if you catch my drift, which obviously was in reference to not just his opponent, but the referees. And I don't know, Brian, that's not what I want my head coach to say to his players with respect to not only the game that you lost in disappointing fashion, but this has nothing to do in that kind of way about what you're going to have to deal with for the rest of the season. Yeah, a referees are going to miss some calls and make some calls you don't like. That's not why you lost the football game. Your team was undisciplined. They didn't play with a sense of urgency, and they allowed a desperate football team missing six starters combined on offense and defense to walk into your house. And for the ninth time, Kyler Murray, who now is the official owner of AT&T Stadium, it feels like, punks you in your own building. Like, that's the part to me I found very confusing and troubling is that that was the message coming out of the locker room after a game yeah. like this. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And, you know, what you did was Cliff Kingsbury after the game says, I hope we don't have to play Dallas again. That's what he says to the media. Mm -hmm. In actuality, to his team in the locker room, he says, we're going to come back here potentially and win a playoff game, guys. Mark it down. If we have to come back here, we are going to win a playoff game here. That's – you gave the Arizona Cardinals confidence to come in here and win a game in two weeks if they come back, them or the Rams. But you gave, you allowed, instead of instead of proving something, and that's all week long, you told us it's a statement game. All week long you told us that. The statement you made is, hey, Arizona, if you want to come in here and have a good game and, you know, and, and, and enjoy and score and do things, by all means, come on back. We'd love to have you here. I want to believe it's different. KG, I get fooled by this team all the time. I really do. I get <laughs> yeah. fooled by – I want to believe they can play with – Dallas, I, I, I've learned this. Dallas could beat anybody in the league, and they could also lose to anybody in the league. That's what this football team is. It's, and, and, and if they don't figure some things out offensively, running the football with their offensive line – if they don't get the ball to their playmakers better, if the quarterback doesn't uh, start, if the quarterback doesn't stop seeing ghosts, and and you know they're going to have problems. They're going to have problems. This this is going to be you and I are going to do a show 
on Monday morning or whenever the playoffs is. I kind of have a feeling Dallas is going to get the Monday night game for some unknown reason Mm -hmm. in the playoffs. I just have a feeling of that because the way the scheduling might be. Mm -hmm. But we're going to we're going to do a show and we're going to talk about this is who they are. This was a team that was good enough to win the division, but they were not good enough to do anything else because they couldn't overcome the problems and the flaws they had during the season. So much coming out of this game, even at one point, Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb had a combined two catches for 18 yards. And we're talking about late into the third quarter. And I want to ask you this before we end our show for today, because Amari Cooper, who came on 105 through the fan with you in the G-Bag Nation, said, hey, I want to help this team on third down red zone opportunities. I want to be able to, you know, to do some things. And the Washington game targets galore being able to make an impact on the game. Teams like the Green Bay Packers with Devontae Adams or to a lesser degree, obviously, with Jamar Chase and what he's been doing, you know, in Cincinnati or in Cooper Cup in, you know, Los Angeles. You Chargers. know who's yeah, the yeah. Chargers. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know who's getting the football regardless of scheme, game plan. They make sure that those guys are getting the football. Yeah. Why doesn't this team who has a $20 million wide receiver take the same mentality and say, we need to get number 19, the football, because we yeah. know by getting him involved, that's going to open up a lot of things for this office, including for CD lamb, obviously Michael Gallup, unfortunately with the torn ACL done for the year. But why doesn't this football team take that same mentality when it comes to this receiver on this team? Because your play caller is a collector of plays. He doesn't have a, he doesn't have a real scheme. He really doesn't. The more the more you dive into what he's doing, he collects plays. He takes from here. He takes from here. He takes from here. He takes from here. He doesn't have something that he can hang his head on. We've talked about this before. If things are going bad, he has nothing he could say, okay, these four plays I'm going to run to get my offense going again. These are the things I'm going to do. I mean, when it gets tough, he puts it on his quarterback, and then his quarterback – isn't always capable of making the play. The quarterback, if he sees somebody open, he makes a throw. He he's not he hasn't done a good job of the contested balls and stuff like that. They just haven't been good enough. They haven't been good enough throwing the football. And is it the blocking? Sure. Is it the play caller? Sure. Is it the quarterback's uh, maybe lack of confidence or really you know ability to throw it in there? Sure. I think it's all those things right now, but. This guy, this this you as a play caller, he's got no way of scheming to get to get Cooper open or Lamb open if teams try and take things away where they make it muddy for Dak Prescott. The routes that they run against some of these coverages probably aren't good enough. Teams are taking it away. Like, okay, if you're gonna if you're gonna be if you're gonna just do this, if you're gonna do this route combination, sure, we'll play with a robber in the middle of the field and we won't let you hit the crossing route. That's why guys like Dalton Schultz make a lot of plays because Dalton Schultz, where they have combinations, Dak's not sure about the combination, but, oh, look, Dalton Schultz is open over here. Boom, Dalton Schultz gets the ball. You know, that's that's really what's going on here right now. And what's sad is you have all those offensive coaches in that room. Mm-hmm. Jerry likes to mention Ben McAdoo. Ben McAdoo's not even a full-time coach on the staff, but Jerry Jones on our station on 105.3 is mentioning him as a, as a guy. Ben McAdoo, Doug Nussmeyer, Mike McCarthy, Kellen Moore. Of the three guys I mentioned, Kellen Moore has had the least amount of experience calling plays of those three guys. But here we are. Here we are, you know, with yeah. you know, an offense that it, it, at times, you know, can, can look great. And then other times when teams decide they want to shut certain things down, they're capable of doing that. The Cowboys now fall to 11 and 5 on the season. If the playoffs were to start today, they would be the 4 seed. They would take on the Arizona Cardinals right now who are sitting in the 5 slot. The NFC West is still up for grabs. If Los Angeles wins this weekend, they will be the NFC West division winner. Meanwhile, the Arizona Cardinals would be the 5 and the Cowboys would be locked in to the 4 seed. Now, there is still a chance the Cowboys could move up to the 2 seed. Their game has been flexed to Saturday night against the Philadelphia Eagles on the road. So a lot of folks thinking, well, by the virtue of their game getting flexed to Saturday, 
this quote unquote forces the Cowboys to play their starters because they won't know what their playoff seating will look like until the end of Sunday. Now, it's highly unlikely that the Cowboys will move up from the four to the two seed because the two teams that are in front of them has some really easy games <laughs> this coming weekend. They could get, but they could get to the three seed. That's and that's exactly they could get to the three and, seed. And, and, yes. and that's and that's the that's the problem that you run into as you're looking at this because it for them for them to get for them to get and I was looking at this earlier for them to get the three seed they would need let's see if I could get this right. Because it, it, it was funny. I was thinking, well, sometimes you have to think about playing this. But for the Cowboys to get the three seed, they're going to need a San Francisco win, a Seattle win, a Tampa win, and their own win. That would get them the th- – they would play – they would be the three seed playing the 49ers. So, you know, that, that – I mean, San Francisco and the Rams, I think, have a pretty good history. I believe – if I'm not mistaken, San Francisco does own that series here as of late. And San Francisco, I mean, the Rams are playing for a lot, but so is San Francisco. But all of a sudden, like I said, if you you get the you get to the three seed, then it would be that that's the combination that you would that's the combination you would need. You would need the San Francisco win, a Seattle win over Arizona. Eh, that we'll see. A Tampa mm-hmm. win and a Dallas win. Two a Three of the four things have possibilities. I mean, <laughs> you know, if you really want to be honest, Dallas could win at Philadelphia. They absolutely could, you know. But, you know, that that that's really the only scenario you have where you're going to get the possibility. But, th- but that means you have to win the game. Mm-hmm. That means you have to win the game. So, you know, will in talking to people in Philadelphia – Kind of sounds like to me that they're going to rest guys. They're they're really they're, big they're on, locked in. Like yeah, they're, they're, they're locked really, in. Yeah, they're really big on health, and they're really big on not practicing their players and making sure that they're ready for the game. So my gut feeling is Philadelphia is not going to play this game like they should. Now, does Dallas? Does that mean Dallas needs to win the game just so in case? You know, the, the, the way Dallas could get the second seed, I looked at this too. San Francisco win, Seattle win, Carolina win, Dallas win. Okay, the Carolina-Tampa game, probably not going to help you there. So you don't really think about the second seed, but do you want to match up potentially against San Francisco instead of Arizona? You know, that's that's what you have to think about. That's really what your win is about. If you would rather play... San Francisco than Arizona potentially go win that football game. Mm-hmm. That that's 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 the decision you have to make. If you're okay with playing Arizona again, then rest all your starters and don't play anybody and don't win the game. Which is interesting, and I'll say this last point as we get out of here, because Trey Lance had to play on Sunday. Jimmy yeah. Garoppolo's got the thumb injury. Right. So maybe if you can find a way to play San Francisco, yeah. who knows what that dicey situation at quarterback could be. Sure. It might sure. be in your best interest to win that game the way that you yeah. need to against Philadelphia and then go from there. But right. we'll get into that as the rest of the week goes on. Obviously, the Cowboys now will play on Saturday, which means a little bit of a shorter week, quote unquote. Uh, but we will still or, have you. Co- mm-hmm. Or or a little bit shorter week. Yeah. But it also means that maybe on the back end, when you get the playoffs, they I I think what's happening here real quick, KG, this is mm-hmm. just my two cents, and it might not be true. I think by getting this game flexed, NBC says, okay, we'll give up rights for a Saturday game the following week. Because NBC will have that Sunday, that excuse me, that Saturday night game. There'll be two games because now you get a Monday night game. Instead of three games on Saturday, you only have two. Mm-hmm. You'll have a 315 game and you'll have a 715 game. I don't see NBC getting Cowboys back to back on Sunday on Saturday nights. I don't see that. Well, it's interesting because the Saturday night games are going to be on ABC ESPN. That's who's got the Saturday night games is ABC ESPN based so on they moved, so NBC does no longer has that Saturday night game then, right? Mm-mm. Okay, Mm-mm. if that's the case, then then all my my thinking is all off there right there. That yeah. then my thinking 
Yeah, I think it's NBC off. So was the ones who announced the games, and when they put out the schedule, ABC, ESPN will have. Okay, the I haven't seen the Saturday. announcement, so then uh, my yeah. apologies, then because yeah. I'm wrong. Because it always was NBC had those Saturday those Saturday night game. Mm-hmm. They always had that Saturday night game. So maybe you do, but I could also see a deal where Cowboys in Arizona on Monday night gets to be like this. This is first time they're doing this. Mm-hmm. Let's go for the big for the big bang here. I kind of feel that Tampa might be the a Sunday night game. Dallas might be the Monday night game. Because they're looking for that, they're looking for that bang. Kyler Murray coming in, eight no, and all that. So, okay, it would be now a juicy you story. Me, yeah, yeah. So if you're telling me that ABC and NBC or ESPN has the Saturday night game, then I think all bets are off there because I always assume that the, the NBC always had that Saturday night game. Mm-hmm. So, okay, cool. Yeah, the NFL doing what it can to have the ratings boom. That is, there are 32 NFL teams, and they are trying to do the same when it comes to this weekend. Regardless, the Cowboys, uh, they got to find a way to handle business <laughs> because after what happened on Sunday, a lot of folks questioning whether or not this team could actually you know, do something in the playoffs by virtue of the fact that they're not beating good teams, it seems like, these days. We will be back on Wednesday with our Boys Collective Wednesday episode. Get you the news and notes on the Cowboys as they get ready to take on the Philadelphia Eagles on Saturday night in Lincoln Financial Field as they try to figure out a way to get out of that four slot and maybe find a way up to the three or possibly the two seed. We'll get you caught up on the latest with Michael Gallup. Unfortunately, Torres ACL done for the rest of the season. Interesting for him because he's in a contract year and what that means for his future. We'll get into all of that on our Wednesday show. So be sure to subscribe to 105 Through the Fan here on YouTube. Also, 105ThroughTheFan.com and all of our social media platforms on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at 105ThroughTheFan. You can find Brian on Twitter at Brian Broaddus. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. Brian, as always, sincerely appreciate the time and look forward to talking to you on Wednesday, sir. That was great, KG. Hey, by the way, Porzingis is in the COVID protocol thing, so you might want to go run that down right now. Okay. (laughs) Have a good day, KG. (laughs) This has been the Boys Collective. We'll talk to you on Wednesday.